After three seasons at the Amex, Graham Potter left his post as Brighton manager to join Chelsea and take over at Stamford Bridge. Under his tenure on the South Coast, the club were praised for their recruitment and development of young players sold on for big fees and last season finished in a club-high ninth place in the Premier League. Now, however, facing a period of uncertainty, Roberto De Zerbi is the new man in, so today we take on a two-season transformation at the Amex and see just how far we can take the Seagulls. Brighton are a great team for a career mode. Lovely kits, lovely real stadium, and some decent young talent as well. In season one, very low objectives too. Finished mid-table, reached the last 16 in the FA Cup, and 46 million in the budget. That's really fair. And of course, lots of love and support for Enoch and Wepu. Can't even imagine how devastating that news must have been to find out he needs to retire early, but I'm sure whatever he chooses to do next, he'll be very successful at it. As for the team though, I would definitely say we need a new center half, a new striker, and possibly a new wide side in midfield as well and there are loads of players with their deals that come the end of the year but I'm only going to give out four contracts two to the youngsters Van Heck and also Ferguson and also to Leandro Trossard who I think is criminally underrated and Alexis Mac Allister as well the rest are going on the transfer list as we try and raise some extra funds and I've just made my first two sales Adam Lallana is off to the Bundesliga to play for Hoffenheim for 2.3 mil Solly March is going to Aston Villa to play under Steven Gerrard so those two deals have gone through and I have accepted a bid from PSV for Welbeck, but I don't know whether Danny's got cold feet, but this is taking forever, man. He still hasn't decided where he's going to go or stay. And I said we'll need a new centre half. Two names on the shortlist, but I'm going to go for the Frankfurt defender, Evan and Dicker. And honestly, man, you've got to capitalise on players with their deals expiring at the end of the year. Valued at 29 mil, and we've just got a bid accepted of 20.5. That is an absolute bargain. And on a five year deal, 38 grand a week, Evan and Dicker is in for a steal of just 20.5 million. And in this free at the back system, we need centre halves that are quick, we need centre halves that are strong, we need centre halves that are defensively capable, but also centre halves that have got good energy as well. Evan and Dicker meets all of that criteria. He's in, and that is an absolute bargain for the former Frankfurt man. So I've just made a quick sale. Joel Veltman is going to replace Evan Dicker and go to Frankfurt for £10 million. And now I'm going to make that wide midfield signing I talked about earlier. But he's a fullback. Yeah, Diogo Delot from Manchester United. Our contract come the end of the season. And I've got an interesting plan here. Bear with me. So offered the Red Devils Jason Steele. They understandably said no. But £12 million and a 10% sell-on clause is all we needed to prize Diogo Delot away from Old Trafford to the Amex. And now he's in. What I'm going to do is change our formation slightly and go from a 3-5-2 to a 5-3-2. We'll put Diogo Delot in as our starting right wing back. Estu Pinan will come in at left wing back as Trossard will move further forward and into the CF slot. And that will gives us a bit more protection for our back three and still enough energy, enough options when going forward on the flanks, but better defensive covered in the wide areas too. I think this is a really smart move. So Danny Welbeck has finally gone to PSV for 4.3 mil and now we need a new striker to replace him and I know just who to get. Marcus Taram of Borussia Mönchengladbach. Physical specimen. And the bargain buys continue at the Amex. Ten and a half million is all we need for the Frenchman to come to England. Brother of Kefren, you all know he's one of my favourite players in FIFA. And of course, son of Lillian, a great footballing family. And this guy's a great striker as well. A number nine that's tall, that's strong, that's quick and can finish. He's the type of striker Brighton fans are crying out for. And he's in as well on a bargain deal. Taram, welcome. So I've just changed Trossard's position to an official centre forward, and this is an interesting one. Now, I didn't plan to sell him, but now in his 30s, Pascal Gross, really great technical player, wanted by Patrick Vieira, and I'm okay letting him go. 9.2 mil to fee. If he wants to go to Selhurst Park, he can. I'm all right with that. And he does indeed go to Selhurst Park for 9.2 mil, and I've got just a replacement in mind as well. Let's keep making his team younger, Curtis Jones. And this is... Pretty strange, but Liverpool won Adam Webster, and that's okay with me. In his late 20s, I don't mind including him in the deal if that softens the transfer fee. And whilst I tried to get Klopp down to cheaper at 2 mil, in the end, I had to pay 2.9 mil. But that's a very small fee alongside Adam Webster for a great young talent in Curtis Jones. They kept Alanco out on the weekend, but now they want another good centre-half. Adam Webster taking a step up to Anfield, Curtis Jones coming 
to the Amex. I've got to say, that is a brilliant piece of business and will still have enough money to replace Webster with a younger center half as well. Didn't anticipate doing that, but it's a, it's a great deal. And I've just made that signing as well. Might not be quite as good of a deal in terms of value for money as the others, but it's still not an inflated transfer fee. 24 million and a sell-on clause for the Everton centre-half, Ben Godfrey, and the former Canary is coming to the Amherst. I've got to say, I really like our back five now. The lot is in and Dicker is in and our Godfrey in as well. We are much more secure in our back line. This has been a big improvement. And I've just made my final signing of the window. I couldn't sell Jason Steele. He wouldn't budge, but he won't play. Etienne Green will replace him on the bench for 5.6 mil. The young English shot stopper is in. So that will do it for summer signings. And I must say, I'm really impressed. Great value for money, great young players, and a great looking Brighton team. So here we go, our summer spending complete, and the first team quality is evident. We've made our team better, we've made it younger. It looks a lot more defensively secure, I'd say, and it should get the goals we've been crying out for as well. So the first season, our objectives are very, very simple. Finish mid-table, reach the last 16 in the FA Cup. Bar an almighty failure, that should be the minimum expectation. Let's see if we can do it. Come on, you Seagulls. We've had a great run at the end of the season, but I don't think it'll be anything to write home about. We have now just won our last three, but yeah, I think this is pretty solid mid-table form for the campaign, really. And we finished in 12th place. So, yep, mid-table finish, 46 points in the end, 12 wins, 10 draws, and 16 defeats. It's, it's about what you'd expect for the first season for a team like Brighton. So, mid-table finish, job done in season one. Yep, I'll take that. Nothing to write home about, but nothing disastrous either. That's more than respectable for me. And as for the cup, this season. Carabao Cup doesn't count towards the objectives but worth showing anyway. Uh, we were knocked out early in the third round at home to Kai City. Manchester United won this and the FA Cup to be fair we were quite unlucky with a draw. I saw us get to the fourth round but we were knocked out by a replay uh, against Spurs. Liverpool the eventual winners of this. So to be fair that's that's not too bad. I'll, I'll take that. And decent growth from our six new signings as well. Green played a few games this year and went up by a rating. Godfrey grew by three and Dicker is now 83 overall and Diogo Dalot is now 81. Really good improvements to our back line there. Going forward, Jones grew by a couple and Enoch and Wefu had a brilliant season. Seven goals and five assists. Go on Enoch and Marcus Taram. What a bargain that was. Now 82 overall. So season one in the books, nothing to write home about but pretty stable which is exactly what you'd want in the first season with a team like Brighton so I'll definitely take that we've laid down the groundwork we've improved our back line we've got that goal scorer and we've got some good young talent as well a mid-table finish in 12th yes technically we failed the FA Cup objective but really going out to Spurs it's not disastrous it looks season two I'd love to see us have a really good cup run and possibly sneak Europe as well if we're going to do that we might need to bring in a star season one down I'm okay with season one let's see what we can do in season two though and it seems the board have similar opinions to me. The budget is about the same as last year. It's up by 10 mil to 57 million. But for the objectives, once again, last 16 in the FA Cup, but in the Premier League, finishing the Europa League spot. Now that is going to be quite tough. And unlike last season, I don't think we should spread our signings out and just buy young players, but instead sign a star or possibly if we've got the money to. And for me, the main area of concern is in the defence. Lewis Dunk now in his 30s. He'll need replacing. I think a star new centre-half is our target this year. And there's eight players out of contract come the end of the season, but we need to sell these guys. They're not good enough for the first team, and we need real first team quality. So any cash they can bring in for us is much more valuable than the player themselves. Six players on the list. Anything we can get, I'll take it. That's what we'll need to bring in a star. And this is the guy I want to replace Lewis Dunk. But will we have the money? Let's find out. And just like last season, I'm going to low ball. But unfortunately, Brendan Rodgers still thinks he can get valuation. You can't, mate. You can't. He's out of contract come the end of the season. I, I still think I can get him cheaper than 45 mil, you know. 42.5 mil, Brendan, for Wilfred Ndidi. Yes, get in. I'll take it. That's a steal for Ndidi. And now, I'm going to do something interesting here. And the contract agreed. Wilfred Ndidi is in, but he's not going to play defence midfield for us. No, I said we need a new centre-half, and that's what Ndidi is going to become. I'm going to convert him from CDM to CB. It'll only take two weeks. He's got a great range of defensive stats, and whilst he's only, I say only, whilst he is six foot, that's more than tall enough to be an RCB with a team that play a five at the back with three centre-halves. So Wilfred Ndidi in, he'll convert to centre-half, 
and I think this could be a masterstroke. So two quick sales to two of our strikers that are out on loan last year. Zakiri has gone to Anderlecht for 2.15 mil. And Aaron Conley, who was at Venice last year, has also left and he's gone to Mallorca. And as the sales continue, Carbonic, a Polish left back, has gone to KRC Genk for 1.9 mil. Shane Duffy is off to Nice. Nice little end of career for Shane Duffy going to the South France. He's off to Nice, though, uh, for 2.6 mil. So, Ndidi is now a centre-half. The position change complete. He grew a rating to 87 over as well. I love it when you change a player's position and they grow a rating. He's now centre half and the player that will bring in as a new midfielder in this team, Florian Newhow of Borussia Mönchengladbach. And I think we're going to have just about enough money to pull this off here, but I'd still like it to be a little bit cheaper if I can. £21 million Mönchengladbach? Yep, 21 mil. That'll be enough for the wages and the sign-on bonus too, I think. And it is indeed Florian Newhow in and once again, another player is still up coming the end of the year. I'm telling you guys, you got to do it. If your budget is limited, look for those players with their contract up coming the end of the season. You can pretty much always get them for under devaluation. So Florian Newhow how in alongside Wilfred and Didi. I said I wanted a star. We got one in Wilfred. We've now got a great new young midfielder. Well, youngish midfielder as well in Florian Newhow. Our summer spending done. And the question is, is this team good enough to get into the Europa League? Well, that is the objective given to us by the board. Plus reach the last 16 of the FA Cup. And of course, don't forget in FIFA career mode, only fifth is the Europa League spot that the board will consider the objective being met. So even 6th or 7th won't be enough in the board's eyes, even though it could give us Europa League. So let's simulate the end of the season and see if we've done it. A Brighton heading to the Europa League, or have we come up short in Season 2? Let's find out. Come when you see goals. Well, I must say, I think, oh, man. We've had so many draws this season. It's unbelievable. We haven't lost many. We've had loads of draws, but it's still a good end to the season. The question is, have we done it? I, I think we might have just snuck fifth, you know. Let's find out together. The manager raising the great, and, and there's the reason why. Sixth. We break up the top six, but we miss out on that fifth and the only guaranteed Europa League spot, according to the board. We broke up the top six. Brilliant season in my eyes, but the board will dispute that. The gunner is two points clear of us. But it, it's still technically Europa League, even though the board don't consider it. Probably should have got to Wembley this year as well. Knocked out the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup at home to Carlisle United, who were a penalty shootout away from reaching the final. We did our FA Cup objective, though. Uh, we were beaten by Leicester City in the fifth round away at the King Power as Arsenal won that. Even so, our Cup objective was hit. But this is what I take issue with, EA. That... That Premier League objective should also be hit as well. Sixth would give us Europa League. So that'll do it for our two season transformation. And I've got to say, out of all the teams in the Premier League this year, Brighton are one of the absolute best to do a FIFA career mode with. They've got a lovely real stadium in the Amex. Really, really nice kits. Some solid young talent with the likes of Sanchez, Tariq Lamptey, and also Mac Allister as well. But it's still a team that does need a step up if they're going to make the next step up and join the ranks and have European football at the Amex. Had a lot of fun with this one though, and in two seasons I thought we transformed the team really, really nicely indeed. We'd be going into Europe for season three if we were to continue, and I definitely recommend a long-term RTG, Brighton and Hove Albion career mode if you were 23. Had a lot of fun with this one, and I'm sure you guys would as well. Thanks for watching this episode of Two Season Transformation, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Let me know in the comment section down below what team we should transfer next in two seasons. And I'll see you for the next episode of Two Season Transformations very soon.